So let's uh, continue from here. Uh, then um, this is a very good example for what is routing, what is uh, uh, computer network, where is the uh, uh, topology, okay? So every um, LAN you see here uh, consists of a topology, okay? And for example, you see that this is the internet, right? Because there are so many companies, so many organizations, so many institutions involved, okay? So, uh, for example, with, uh, within our university, within uh, University of Swan, we have our own LAN, right? And let's say uh, Seoul University has its own LAN, and some company in Swan or in another uh, city has its own LAN. So, all these LANs are connected to the other LAN through routers. You can see here, okay? These are routers. So routers are that, it's the, these are devices that help us connect our LAN with the other uh, LANs in the network, okay? And there are backbone routers. So the difference is just, these are more powerful and more big um, routers, okay? So, for example, just like this, when all the computers in Korea are each in the office, in the university, in different uh, places connected with the LAN, and each city, for example, let's say Suwon is connected with Seoul, Seoul computers are connected with Daegu computers, okay, or computers in Daegu. So, Seoul, uh, Suwon, and Daegu, we have routers, so these routers will connect us together, right? But computers in Korea can be connected to computers in China or computers in Europe or computer in US using the backbone router, okay? So whatever, okay, whatever you write or you type here or you access or you send, it goes through the router of South Korea, right? Because South Korea has a backbone to access the internet, okay? And this, for example, if South Korea doesn't want its citizens to, to use a Facebook, they can just block the Facebook on the back wall, okay? So these routers, they have softwares where on these softwares, for example, you have the proxy server. On the proxy server, you can list websites that you do not allow your uh, people to, to view, okay? So just like that, you can um, uh, limit the access to uh, thus websites, okay? So anyways, there are LANs, there are ones, okay? There are months connected together. They create the internet when they are connected with the backbone router, okay? Okay, and let's talk about public and private networks. What are public networks and what are these private networks? So public networks are networks that are available uh, publicly private networks are uh, networks that are private and that are that use a least line connection okay so for example in some places you go you access uh, public wi-fi right public wi-fi means wi-fi uh, uh, available to everybody everyone connected or everyone within a perimeter right and there is also private where you can use your own for example digital subscriber line so that you can use your own leased line connection, okay? So this physically connects uh, intranet to one another. So if there is a difference between intranet and internet. We will talk in the next slide, okay? So leased line means a permanent telephone connection between two points. And the advantage is when you have your own leased line, since it is not public, the security is very high. Okay, because you'll be uh, talking on a line that is secured. Okay, it's not everybody can, uh, uh, nobody can tap, tap into your, uh, your uh, connection. Okay, the drawback is a cost that you have to pay the money to get the least line, right? So, and also scanning problem is there to easily add other <coughs> companies. And uh, this private line is 
Uh, okay, we will talk about intranet, extranet here, okay? So um, let's talk about virtual private uh, network or VPN. So most, I, I guess most of you have heard of this VPN or virtual private networks, okay? So it's a private network, but as you can see the name, it is a, pri it's a virtual private network. You cannot have your own, virtual means it's not real, right? So uh, not real means you are not physically uh, alone or you are not physically using a single connection by yourself, okay? So virtual private network means there will be a tunnel created between you and the computer with which you are communicating, okay? So that is called IP tunneling. And when you use VPN, you pay, right? You pay extra money. And in VPN, <coughs> a tunnel will be created and it feels like it's only you and the receiver who are talking on this line, okay? Because this line doesn't allow anyone to interfere. So it is highly secured. But in other networks where there is no virtual private network, it could pass through anyway, okay? So virtual private network is a connection via public network and protocols, but you can send sensitive data because it, use, it uses IP tunneling. So that is called encapsulation system, okay? So it is called virtual because this is not a physical fence that protects your data, okay? But imaginary, there is a, a, a line through which you communicate with your receiving computer and that line or that tunnel is secured. So it feels like there is a tunnel through which it's only you and your receiving partner or the receiving computer is communicating. So it's called virtual because you cannot do that physically, right? Because it is on the air. So encapsulation encrypts packet content uh, places inside another packet. And so this is called IT wrapping. Then uh, it sends this packet to the receiver. So uh, the VPN has to be installed on the sending and uh, receiving computers, okay? As I have said, it is virtual because uh, says the connection seems permanent, but it's not actually. So it's a temporary connection and it's a temporary tunnel through which uh, you and your receiving computers communicate, okay? So VPN is more secured, okay? But you have to pay more for uh, this service. So, and I want you to uh, uh, differentiate what is intranet, extranet, and how these two are different from internet, okay? So you see here there is A, right? Intra, and this is inter, okay? So intra, internet, as we've said, internet is a global network, okay? Or a network of networkers, okay? Or this is a connection of computers in a globe, right? But intranet is a connection of computers. For example, Suwon University can have its own intranet, can have its own intranet, okay? So through this intranet, only employees of Suwon University will communicate, okay? So it's a kind of interconnected private network which allows only those within the boundary of the organization to use. So it is intra, so intra is very small, right? But internet is a global one, okay? But there is also extranet. So extranet means, we have said that if Swan University has its own private networks where the employees of uh, Swan University use. And let's say Seoul University or uh, let's say Kyonghi University has its own intranet, okay? There is intranet here in Kyonghi University, intranet in Swan University, okay? So when these two intranets connect, so we created extranet. 
right? So an intranet and extranet is an internet that extends beyond the organization and incorporates networks of outside entities, okay? But extranet and internet are different, okay? Extranet is just when you access uh, the private network out of your boundary and connect with the other intranet, then it is called extranet, okay? So here, connecting to the outside or the other private network is, um, is called, uh, this is called uh, extranet, okay? But these two are internet when you are bounded by the boundary of your organization, okay? Okay, let's continue. Then let's talk about protocols. And uh, so protocols are set of uh, rules. So the, they are a connection, uh, collection of network data rules that we use to uh, transmit data in, in the, on the internet. So computers must use the same uh, protocols to communicate, okay? So um, protocols, protocols are like the rules of uh, communication, okay? And if you are not uh, using the same language, then you cannot communicate, right? So you have to use the same protocol to communicate or to understand each other, okay? The same thing for the computers to understand each other, they have to uh, communicate using the same protocols, okay? So ARPANET uh, was using the network control protocol, okay? But now we're using the IP protocol. Right? the internet protocol. So ARPANET, as we have said, is the first internet which was in, created in 1969. Right? So there are two types of architectures. There are proprietary ar architectures in protocols, and there are open architectures. Proprietary architectures, these are, there are manufacturers that produce protocols or that have their own protocols, okay? So, uh, so now we have mostly open architecture for, because for example, you can buy uh, LG computer, you can buy Samsung computer, okay? And, or you can buy a Mac computer, but you can exchange email or you can communicate with these computers, right? You can have, different computers or different platforms can communicate because um, of open architecture, okay? Because each computer has its own way of translating or changing these protocols. But in proprietary architecture, manufacturers create their own protocols and they give these protocols to their products. So which means one product cannot communicate with the other because this, uh, these protocols are created only for their own uh, products, okay? But now uh, there is open architecture mostly which uses common protocol. So four key message handling groups are there. Then this open architecture has contributed a lot to the expanding of the internet, okay? Internet success. Then uh, this is for example, a popular protocol called TCP IP protocol, okay? So you know what is IP. So every computer has an IP. For example, if you check your computer, the address will go like this, 192.168.2.20 or something like that. So there are four digits. So this is called the internet protocol address, right? So TCP is a transmission uh, control protocol. And this TCP IP has uh, about four layers application layer, session layer, network layer, and something like that, okay? So uh, we'll not go into detail of this communication, but when two computers exchange data, it could be anything, this data goes through different layers until it is out of your computer, okay? So until it is out of your computer to the internet, uh, through your network interface card, it goes through four different layers according to TCP IP. Or if you are using 
uh, OSI standard, then it, it is seven layers. So anyways, <coughs> TCP IP is a transmission control protocol, and this controls messages or files disassemble, disassembly into packets before internet transmission, okay? So as we have said, in packet switching, message is uh, divided into packets, right? So um, this packet will be transmitted from your computer to the receiving computer, and each message will be given an IP, I mean, um, receiving IP address and the same sending IP address so that the receiving computer can identify these packets, okay? So, for example, in TCP, then I'll just mention, there is a, a, a layer called application layer, okay, application. There is a layer called uh, transport layer. And the third one is internet, internet layer. And fourth is called the network interface layer. So just is this is just for your knowledge. Don't worry about the technical. So if you get my point, then it's okay. So for example, you write an email, right? So the web website or the Gmail website that you use to write your email is called the application layer, okay? Because that is an application, right? Then you you write an email and send it to me. Let's say. Okay, so before it reaches the network interface layer or before it gets out of your computer, it reaches the physical layer, it goes through transport internet layer. So in each of these layers, your message will be attached with different uh, information. Like the origin of this, this message is your computer, so it will have your IP address because as we have said in packet switching, the, the data will be uh, sent to the receiving computers through different channels, right? So each packet will be, um, and to each packet, uh, this passing through this layer will be attached with address, indexes, so different information, okay? So that when it reaches the receiver, so when it reaches the receiver, it comes through the network interface because that is a physical layer, then when you open the email, it goes to the application layer, okay? Because that is through which you view the email. So from the sending computer, it go, it takes this path, takes application, transport, internet, and network interface layer. From the receiver side, it takes network, internet, transport, application layer, okay? So uh, this is just to, to, to talk about that, okay? So files will be disassembled into packets and sent uh, to um, the transmission. And internet protocol is internet protocol is this one as we have said. This specifies addressing details for each packet, okay, and labels uh, packet with origin origination and destination address, okay. So TCP/IP uh, uh, refers to both uh, protocols, uh, <clears throat> but uh, it replaces this one because this was was the old one used by ARPANET, but now we use TCP/IP protocol, okay. So, and here, uh, there are two types of IP protocols, the version four and version six, okay? So I will just pass this because uh, I don't want to complicate things here. But if you are very interested to know how IP works, then uh, you can uh, write your question or uh, email me, so I will explain it later, okay? But, uh, one um, major point I want to talk here is IP version 4 uses 32 bits. So here I wrote this one, right? This address is an IP address. Okay? And this is IP version 4. Okay? IP protocol version 4. The thing is, now we are moving to <clears throat> IP version six, okay? The only reason that we are moving to 
uh, IP version six is because this address, this one, starts from actually 0 0.0.0.0 to 192 to 255, 255, 255, 255. That's the last. So you have address from 0 to 255, 0 to 255, 0 to 255, 0 to 10, up to this, from 0. So these four different uh, places ca you can use from 0 to 255. And when you register computers with the, this IP address, the maximum computers this address can handle is this much. That is uh, how much? Four trillion? Okay. Okay. Four billion different addresses. But now, as I have said, how many internet users do we have? We have 4.5 billion internet users. So this 4.5 billion users might use their own computers. So which means for every computer, if we have IP address, we have already exceeded or we have already over the assignment of IP address, okay? So it's not possible for the internet to handle more than 4.2 billion computers with this IP address, okay? Because of this, we are moving now, it's not uh, over, but we are moving to this version, okay? Where we will be using 128-bit number of addresses, and this address can handle 34 followed by 370. I don't know what that number is even mean in English, okay? 34, then 37 zeros. It can handle all um, this much number of computers. Okay, so the main reason to move from IP version four to IP version six is because the number of computers has already exceeded, or the number of internet users has already exceeded uh, four uh, billion. Okay. So let me just pass the other details because I don't want to confuse you. So uh, <clears throat> I will talk about this if you want uh, more explanation, okay? And okay, you might say uh, one, one point I'll uh, point, mention here. For example, if you go to your uh, computer settings and if you check the uh, internet option. In the internet option, you can find IP address. Okay, but you can have you you can see the IP address of your computer there. Okay, it might be like this: 192, 168, 20, or 25, something like this. Okay. <clears throat> so you might say, what if there is the same number, or same number is used by another computer? Okay. There is what they call subnetting. So every computer on the internet is represented by subnetting, or this subnetting changes the IP address of these devices into a new address called a one address, okay? So it creates additional uh, space, okay? So that is called network translation, where you change the IP address into a normal IP address, because this is actually a private IP address. So if you go to any computer labs and you can create a network and give this IP address, okay? Like 192.168.0.1.0.2.0.3.0.4, okay? Up to this will be common. After this, you can use one, two, three, four. For example, if you have 25 computers, you, create, you want to create a network, then you can use one, okay? You can use register this IP address by yourself, okay? And you, when you give this IP address, then uh, the computer by itself will give the other address, okay? <clears throat> so that is called network address translation, not to create any uh, confusion 
in the internet, okay? All right. Then electronic mail trans uh, protocols, then uh, we have email servers, we have client computer. So um, let me make it clear what is a client computer and a server computer, okay? So for example, in Swan University, there are computers, right? <clears throat> you also use your own computers when you come to the university, right? So your computer is a client computer, okay? But for example, you open a portal, Swan University portal, and this information on Swan University portal is displayed to you, to you from which? From a server computer in Swan University, right? So a client, client computer is your computer. So a computer that requests for a service is called client. A computer that replies for the request of the client is called a server computer. So we have email client computers that read email, email messages and that there are email server computers that are devoted to handling emails, okay? That store, that forward this email message to uh, different users, okay? And the protocols, we have so many protocols, okay? One protocol, as I've already mentioned, is the common one that we use is HTTP, right? So HTTP www.google dot com okay so http is a protocol right protocol okay protocol so http is a hypertext transfer protocol that but the, this is to transfer hypertext hypertext documents okay just like this for email we have two common protocols called simple mail transfer protocol and post office uh, protocol so, okay there's two protocols that they differ in their functions okay in same simple mail transfer protocol way or smtp specifies mail message format describes the administration email server describes email mail transmission on the internet p o uh, p it uh, send this mail to the computer users deletes from the server. So you can tell this when you use POP, you can send uh, an email to a server and you can uh, tell the user's computer um, to delete from the server as long as it is delivered to your computer or as long as you read it. Or you can say do not delete this, uh, this email, okay? And you can also ask if there uh, is any new email that is sent to, to you, okay? So anyways, this is a very common one that we use. So, but uh, for email, we have uh, this protocol. So again, now we are um, running out of time. Then let's talk about this multi-purpose uh, internet mail extensions, interactive mail access protocol, just uh, forget about this. Web page request and delivery protocols are there, uh, web client softwares, web server softwares, okay? Client server active, active architecture. So as I have explained here with client computer and server computer communication, so that arrangement is called actually a client server architecture, right? So in a client server ar architecture, so mostly we use this architecture, okay? So in this architecture, there is a client computer that always asks for a service or requests for a service. And there is a server computer that replies for the request of the client, okay? So <clears throat> for example, if you are in Swan University and wants to access uh, email, your request first goes to a server, a proxy, proxy server of Swan University, right? Then from proxy server of to Swan University, it goes to the internet, okay? To look for what uh, you uh, are searching, okay? So it goes through the server. 
So every request of the client is handled by the server. Okay, so this is called a client server arch architecture. So actually we also have another architecture called a peer-to-peer -peer architecture where computers, client computers request each other for a service. Okay, so there is no need to ask the server because every client computer can ask and also can uh, reply for the requests of the other clients in the network, okay? So we have web clients uh, that request for service. We have servers that receive requests from many different computers. And we have uh, this protocol called hypertext uh, transfer protocol, as I've said, HTTP. Everybody is familiar with HTTP, okay? And the reason we use HTTP is because we want to access hypertext documents, okay? Hyper, <coughs> hypertext documents are documents which when we click, for example, you open a website, okay? Then when you click on a blue link, then <coughs> that will take you a different to a different page or to the same, uh, I mean, to a different website, okay? So these types of documents are called hypertext documents. Documents that when clicked, take you to a different website or a different page on the same website, okay? So to access this kind of documents, we pre-seed uh, our URL with a hypertext transfer protocol. And the whole, like this one, uh, sorry, this one, HTTP, like this one, www.google.com. This whole is called a URL, okay? Or a uniform resource locator. This is how you locate a Google website, okay? That's why it's called uniform resource locator. And to access this, you have to use HTTP as a protocol because Google website contains hypertext documents. Then you use colon, then you use to this two forward slash, okay? Then www, then you use this. This is called the domain name. Domain name is a name of the website that is it with which it is registered, okay? For example, Suwon is the domain name for Suwon University website, which means on Suwon University server, the name by which the website is saved is Suwon. So domain name is the name of the website with which it is uh, stored or saved on the server. Okay, but the whole is called a uniform resource locator or a URL, okay? So <clears throat> we have web, uh, the emergence of uh, web. So what is web? Web, we have already said, is a software running on the internet. It's a subset of the internet, okay? And it generates network traffic because we have web servers uh, which uh, <clears throat> help us access these websites and a web results from new ways of thinking about information storage and retrieval as i've said web it is called web just like spider web okay it's called web because when you search for something or when you use the internet this data on your computer is displayed from different places or different computers in the world and they come together that is why it is called a web, right? So the T technological web elements are the hypertext documents and graphical user interface, or this, you know, is called GUI, right? So um, I think, let me stop here, okay? Um, and the same thing uh, as today, uh, this, from this, uh, um, the, the other uh, slides, they talk about 
HTML tags, okay, hypertext documents, so a little bit technical. So what I'll do is uh, next week, I will go on fast over this, then I will post a video of detailed uh, HTML uh, discussion, okay? So that you can easily see the video and uh, understand uh, the concepts, okay? So uh, I hope uh, everything's clear. Uh, this is all I have for uh, today. I, I was planning to <laughs> uh, finish, but um, it is too much slides. So we'll uh, continue from this uh, uh, next week. Okay. So please read about uh, uh, this and other uh, the remaining slides so that I can go fast over this uh, uh, next week. Okay. So there is a question about what about Wi-Fi in which me medium does it work and the medium through internet or extranet. So for Wi-Fi also we have different arrangements. We have, for example, public uh, Wi-Fi. Okay. So Wi-Fi is a different. Wi-Fi and the internet or extranet are different things, right? Wi-Fi is the, the, the device or the, the technology that we use to access the internet, okay? But internet and extra. So you can limit the usage of Wi-Fi to some organization or some place. You can make it intranet, you can make it extranet also. Okay, we'll talk about this technological issues also later. So I have less than one minute to finish uh, uh, this video. Thank you very much for having me. If you have questions, you can still post to the portal and uh, see you next week, okay? Have uh, a good week, weekend. Okay, bye.